Good morning. So good to see you all on this Easter Sunday. We are very glad that you've joined us today and we welcome you if you are visiting with us today and we welcome old friends as well. We welcome those who have no church home, need strength, want to follow Christ, have doubts or do not believe. We welcome grandparents, mothers, fathers, and single people. We welcome people of all colors, cultures, abilities, sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions. Welcome to old and young, to believers and questioners, and to questioning believers. Here, everyone is welcomed. No matter who you are, whom you love, or where you are on life's journey, you're welcome here and we're glad that you're with us. We hope that this time of worship lifts up your spirit. Before we begin our service, I just have a couple of announcements. First, I'd like to point out that immediately following the service, our postlude today is the Hallelujah Chorus, and you get to be part of the choir. So we have scores printed out and available for anyone who would like to join us in this wonderful celebration of Christ's resurrection. If you could raise your hand now if you'd like a score, our deacon Darren will be coming around and passing those out to you. I'd like to thank those who are assisting me in leading our service today, certainly for Nare and our choir leading us in song. We are also grateful to have our reader today, Bev, our deacons, John, Valerie, and Darren, and our video guru, Brian. We are glad to have the flowers in the sanctuary today delivered and set up by our own Judy. And you can see in the bulletin who donated these. So thanks to all of you who gave flowers to beautify our sanctuary today. We love them, they're beautiful. Let them beautify your home. So please take your flower after the service, take it home with you, you can share it with a friend or make your own space more beautiful. Also, I'd like to point out that we had an Easter egg hunt here today on the lawn in front of the church. Many of our kids are now full of candy. <laughs> and some of them are full of candy and looking forward to having more after the service. Uh, thanks to the CE board for hosting this wonderful event. Also, I want to point out that we have uh, a newsletter coming out tomorrow. You can read about what's happening in the life of the church in that. If you would like to be included on the newsletter and you're not already we have visitor information cards you can leave um, in the offering plate when it comes around those are located right in front of you along with some more information about our church and our denomination i do want to highlight highlight that we have an event coming up at the end of april there's a flyer in your bulletin for this best of the rest community yard sale which is a fundraiser to support pebbles of strength one of our mission partners which helps to make people aware of issues related to suicide prevention. So I hope that you can come and participate in that, uh, buy some good stuff to take home, or if you would like to get a table to sell your own stuff, uh, you can learn about that on this flyer as well. And now I invite you all, as you are able, to stand as together we offer our call to worship as it is printed in the bulletin. This is a great and joyous festival day. Come to celebrate amazing good news. We, we gather, gather for worship in awe and wonder. wonder. The, the tomb, tomb is empty. Death, Death is not, not the last word. word. Sing songs of praise for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. God, God has, has answered our prayers, prayers with salvation. salvation. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is alive and, and we too shall, shall live. Open your hearts and minds to the risen Christ. You are greeted by name and welcome here. This Let's is the day that, that God, God has made. Has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. And now please join me in the unison prayer of invocation. We greet, we greet the, the dawning, dawning brightness of this special day with hopes, hopes renewed. We have, we have known, known grief and sorrow, sorrow loss and, and tears, fear and, and failure. failure. Meet, Meet us here, living Christ, for we need this time of resurrection. We need your healing presence. 
We need, we need your word of greeting that welcomes us into the community of faith in spite of our doubts and faithlessness. You are the great teacher. We have come to learn from you. We want to be your disciples. Amen. Our first hymn today is from the Black New Century Hymnal number 240, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. seated. The Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, I handed on to you as of first importance what I in return had received, that Christ died for our sins. In the mystery of that atoning sacrifice, we come to this time of prayer, bringing our sins to the door of the empty tomb. Let us offer together the unison prayer of confession as it is printed. We cannot truly worship you, loving God, until we recognize how unloving we have been. We cannot truly live until we admit the many ways we have been dwelling in death. 
We cannot know forgiveness until we honestly face the wrong we have done and the good we have neglected. We admit before you now the anger and spite we have carried in our hearts, the doubts and fears we have allowed to paralyze us, the misplaced priorities that have led us away from your will and way. Help us break down the barriers we have erected so we can experience new life today. In Jesus' name, amen. Your friends, hear this word of good news. God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears God and does what is right finds forgiveness and acceptance. The one who came to embody love among people is ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. In Jesus' name, our sins are forgiven, and we are being saved. The grace of God is extended to each of us on this day of resurrection. Praise be to God. reconciled to God, let us be reconciled to one another. I invite you to share a word of peace with your neighbor. And as you're all sharing peace, I invite our kids to join me up front for this morning's children's message. Sesame Street still and one of my favorite things is um, one thing one of these things is not like the other how many of you have seen that one anyone no you have have any of you all right so uh, we're gonna do a little game one of these things is not like the other I need your help I have three items for display right behind you here see those items one of those things is not like the other which one is it? What do you think? The one without the flower. The one without the flower. Which one? Oh, this one. Because these ones are growing, that one's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very nice, is it? Oh, it is dead. Look at yeah, it's, it's dead. It's dead. <laughs> this is not one of the ones that Miss Judy brought and set up for us here. This is something from two years ago. These are one of the tulips from two years ago that I took home and I stuck it in my garage and I forgot about it. I was gonna let it dry out a little bit and then plant it in the fall because that's what you do with these. You can take these home, let them dry out and then actually plant them in the fall, which is kind of fun. And what happens if you plant them in the fall? Hopefully they bloom again, right? So even if I let it dry out like this and it got all shrivelly and ugly like these are, and I'd be left with something like that, I could take this little bulb here, this part, stick that in the ground in the fall, and in the spring, it would pop out one of these flowers again. 
pretty amazing, isn't it, that that big flower can come out of a tiny little bulb like that. Well, that's what the fruit is here. Yeah, so, you know, it's amazing that you can take something that seems so shrivelly and lifeless like this, and it can make one of those beautiful flowers like we have here. It's almost like a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's amazing things. You know, today in church we're learning about how God does that in our lives too. God takes things that might seem kind of shrivelly and dead and makes them full of life and makes them bright and joyous and energetic so that they run around. <laughs> you know, this is what God wants of us today is to recognize God's life in us, the gift of life that God gives us so that we can be full of joy and run all over this planet celebrating the good news of God's love. So today, let us think about that, how we can be like these flowers here, sprouting forth beautiful things, even as the world might feel like kind of shrivelly and old. Let's pray. God, we thank you for giving us signs of new life all around us, that you plant within us things that bloom and help us to sprout and be beautiful in this world. Help us to share with joy that news that you are doing good things in our world. We pray all this in the name of Christ, whose resurrection we celebrate today. Amen. All right, thank you for joining me up front. Now you can go back with your families. The scripture reading this week is from Isaiah 25, verses 6 through 9. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, See, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for who we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Thank you, Beverly. Our gospel lesson today comes to us from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices so that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified, he has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. These words are breathed into us by the Holy Spirit. Thanks.
Well, as we heard, worried were Mary Magdalene, Mary mother of James and Salome, as they went to the tomb where Jesus' body had been laid. They'd gone there at dawn, on the Sunday morning after Jesus' crucifixion, so that they could anoint his body with embalming spices. As they went, still stunned and stricken with grief, they were worried that no one would be there and able to roll away for them the great stone sealing the entrance to the tomb. Upon arriving there, their worry was turned to alarm when they saw that the stone had already been rolled away. And inside the tomb was not the body of Jesus, their teacher and friend, but a young man dressed in an angelic white robe who delivered to them a divine word for them to not be alarmed. For the one that they had been seeking, the one that they saw be crucified with their own eyes, was no longer there, but that he had been risen, and that they should go and tell Peter and the disciples that they would all meet Jesus again in Galilee. Going out of the tomb, they fled from the scene, stunned by amazement and terror. The final word of the gospel, according to Mark, is that the stunned woman left there and, in fact, did not say anything to the disciples or to anyone else, for they were frozen in fear. This gospel of Mark, likely the first to be written, ends here with Jesus grieving and devoted friends, being worried, alarmed, amazed, terrified, and afraid. You may notice, missing from the story, are scenes of the resurrected Jesus appearing to his disciples and sharing with them comforting words, of Jesus displaying his wounds to dispel his disciples' unbelief, of him sharing a meal with his friends, thus restoring them to fellowship and proving that he had resurrected in body. Missing is Jesus commissioning of them to go and make disciples of other people and of his glorious ascension. Now the story in Mark ends right here with the three devoted women running away from the tomb terrified, amazed, and fearful. Later writers attempted to correct this unsatisfying conclusion by adding their own endings. Many of our Bibles include two of them. One is appropriately named the shorter ending of Mark, and another is called the appropriately named longer ending of Mark. Although neither was original. And it's also likely that the writers of both Matthew and Luke, both of whom incorporated almost all of Mark, also attempted to finish the story and so correct the record with their own writings. But I think it is good for us to consider today the Gospel of Mark just as it ends, just as it ends, even without the Hollywood ending. And so we are left with three followers of Jesus running away from the empty tomb and running away from the good news that Jesus had risen, not rejoicing nor excited to share the good news, but fleeing silently, alarmed, amazed, and fearful. I believe that those of us who hear and read this gospel are meant to recognize ourselves in these and all the other followers of Jesus in Mark, who from the Gospels beginning to its ending are alarmed and fearful, amazed and faithless, misunderstanding and bewildered, just as we are. We can identify with the fearful Marys and Salome as they ran from the empty tomb, 
we should all imagine ourselves in their place, ready to go and form the next chapters of the story, ourselves, through our own living. Even though we might be amazed beyond belief, or alarmed at the state of things in the world, or afraid of doing something about it. Well, having heard the report that Christ has risen, what will we do in this moment? Will we linger in the lifeless tomb, disbelieving or searching still for life to be found where life is no longer? Or will we go out from the tombs and go away from the places that keep us trapped from experiencing life? Will we be silently stunned when we witness the amazing miracles of God? Or will we share with joy the good news that we witness of resurrection power being seen all around us, transforming us? Will we remain fearful and broken by the dreadful brokenness in the world? Or will we have hope that God can take even this violent, broken place, and breathe new life into it. Dear friends, on this Easter Sunday, let us recognize in the empty tomb a cause for celebration, for death and decay do not win, and Christ's way of living in love remains unconquered. Let us sing, therefore, hallelujah. Let us turn away from the tomb and go joyfully to gather others to journey with us to better places, to where Christ calls us, that we might go and experience together new miracles of resurrection life and be part of that story as we work to create resurrection life in the world around us. Today, let us go and write new chapters of this gospel story. Chapters full of hope for a better, more loving and life-filled world. So what wonderful stories will we create today? Let us write new ones today, tomorrow, and all the days before us, for that is our calling, friends. Amen. I invite you to join with me in responding to our call to embrace resurrection life as we sing our next hymn from the Pilgrim Hymnal, the red one, number 180, Alleluia, Alleluia, Hearts to Heaven. Please stand as you are able.
let us offer together our litany of praise for Easter. When everything was dark and it seemed that the sun would never shine again, your love broke through. Your love was too strong, too wide, and too deep for death to hold. The sparks cast by your love dance and spread and burst forth with resur resurrection light. Gracious God, we praise you for the light of new life made possible through Jesus. We praise you for the light of new life that shone on the first witnesses of resurrection. We praise you for the light of new life that continues to shine in our hearts today. We pray that the Easter light of life, hope, and joy will live in each of us this day, and that we will be bearers of that light into the lives of others. Amen. Please be seated. And we do share God's light with one another. We lift up one another in this community through our support for each other always. We do so by caring for one another and by bringing to each other our joys and concerns to bring to God in prayer. Does anybody have a joy or concern that they would like to share with the congregation this morning for us to be keeping in prayer? I have a joy. It's wonderful to have Jen back with us in the choir. Jan back with us, flanked by a couple of uh, newish singers. Does anybody else have a joy or concern today? My girlfriend who had thyroid cancer has had all of her treatments and so far the cancer is gone. She is feeling great and life is good again. Very good. I will say as I'm traveling that I am joyful for our cantata that took place last night, led by Nari in our choir. It was lovely. Definitely worthy of a woohoo. <laughs> if you are unable to be here, you can see it online. It's still saved and streaming on our website and YouTube channel, so check it out. Definitely will bring joy to your spirit. Our dog died and we got a new dog that's a good doggy. She used to be a crazy one, but we, but she cranked <laughs> And I will pray for your embarrassed sister. <laughs> now, we are grateful that you got a new dog that is full of joy. Maybe not crazy, but full of, full of joy. <laughs> full of joy. We are grateful for all the signs of joy all around us. that come through children and our doggies and the lovely plants and all the signs of life that God gives to us as a gift. And so we celebrate with thanksgiving. And I invite you now to join with me in a spirit of prayer. Loving God, we gather today to praise you, saying hallelujah, for we have been transformed in an instant. Your love resurrected Jesus defying sin's grasp on us, and today we claim the power of life over death, of delight and joy over pain, and of freedom over oppression. And we give you thanks for empowering us today that we may live as your resurrection people and bring your joyful news to all. In the blessed hope of the resurrection, we pray to you, giver of life that does not perish, asking that by your grace you would raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for the church. May, be, may we be a witness to the good news of this day, that Jesus Christ is risen 
and that his love and life are extended to all. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for the world. Destroy the shroud of death and destruction that is cast over the nations and people of earth. Spread out your feast of plenty and peace for all. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. Life-giving God, we pray for this community and all the places where we live. Help us to proclaim your message of reconciliation that you show no partiality, but welcome all who trust in you and call on your name. By your grace, O God, raise us from death to life. In life-giving God, we pray for those we love, that your steadfast love would surround them. May your peace be with those who suffer. Uphold those who need your love with your mighty, merciful hand and open the gates of joy and healing for them. By your grace, O God, raise us all from death to life. O life-giving God, who is love divine, in raising Christ to new life, you open the path of salvation for all people. Send us out. Today we pray with the joy of those who were sent to proclaim the good news, that we have seen the Lord, so that all the world may celebrate with you in the banquet of your peace. We pray these things with joy in the name of Christ, whose resurrection we lift up today in celebration, as we say the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we have seen the Christ that makes all the difference in our view of life. When we have encountered life, we can no longer pursue the ways of death. When we realize how much we have received by a loving God, our gratitude pours forth an eagerness to share the good news with the world. And in that spirit, we will now receive this morning's offering.
us offer together our unison prayer of dedication. We consecrate all we have brought to share, that the message of today may spread through its streets and across the lands, beginning within these walls and bursting out for all the world to hear and observe. May the glad songs motivate practical ministries. As forgiven and forgiving people, we take new life into the marketplace, into our jobs and schools, into our social life and leisure hours. May all we offer express true thankfulness. Amen. And our final hymn this morning is from the Black Hymnal, number 245, The Day of Resurrection. God's children in the First Congregational Church in Stoneham have come together to grow in our faith in Jesus Christ through worshiping, teaching, nurturing, forgiving, accepting, and serving. We share God's love and joy with each other, and so we go now to share God's love and joy in our community and with the world. And as we go and witness to God's resurrection power as shown in Christ, May God, who is our creator, may Christ, who is our redeemer, and may the spirit, who is our sustainer, go with us and grant us peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.